Hey everybody, welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Nick Hamas, and today I will be interviewing your usual host, Alan Sakyan. Thank you for having me, Nick. Absolutely. <laughs> it's this my is, pleasure. This is a fun experience for me. Being Simulation. In this yeah, it's how, how does the how does the guest chair feel? The guest chair is very interesting. It is. It's because <laughs> After sitting there, whatever, 200 times and asking the other person questions, this is very interesting. And plus, you're a really close friend of mine, which I, yeah, I really like that it's, you know, you yeah. in the sense. But also just this view is interesting, you know, it's a different. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to see the globe in the nice map of San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, no, I, right. <laughs> I've been here since like basically the beginning of simulation and I feel like you have so much to say that like you're always asking people questions you're always interviewing and you get a little bit of your own side of things but like we, we don't get to ask you questions and I, I feel like that's something that just needs to happen at some point you know yep yeah let's do it yeah let's do it i'm happy that you wanted to do this and to talk about these questions that you have lined up to ask me, this will be fun because you're very polymathic, you have a strong mental lattice, so I'll hit the tennis ball back and I'm sure the conversation will be really good. I'm excited for it. Let's yeah. Do it. Let's do it. So I want to start out like, I, I think there's a lot of people who... Shout out to Google Earth quick. We love Google Earth. Yes. And it's just gorgeous and we like... Isn't Earth pretty? I know, I know. I just, I mess around with this all the time <laughs> and I just want, just want to shout out to amazingness. By the way, by the way, for those that don't know, Nick's actually a Googler, he's a roboticist, yep. he's a polymath, so anyway, all, all his Twitter's in the bio, you can go check him out in more detail. Nick and I actually met in, uh, in college our freshman yeah. year, which was eight years ago, which is crazy to think about that now. But, so now yeah. we're here eight years later in the Bay Area. You had a question, I just wanted to do say that quick. This is my yeah. normal. Yeah, you see, you see you're, you're, you're not in this chair, okay. <laughs> so shut up, Alan. <laughs> So I wanted to start off like, I think there's a lot of people who are newer to simulation and haven't seen all the way going back to the beginning, which was, was that two years ago? Yeah, it's like uh, the first show was with Aubrey de Grey in yep. October of 2017. So that's uh, wow. it's, uh, 13, four, four, 14, 14 months. 14 months. 14 months ago, yeah. Yeah, I think there's a lot of people who like haven't been around 250 that long. shows yeah. later. Yeah. Who haven't seen all of that. and yeah. I. Like, Nick has. I have. Nick has. Can you, can you talk a little bit about like how you started simulation, like how you went from just being Alan and being the guy who you are to I want to do this project? Good question. Good question. Um, all right. So let's see here. Well, just a very insatiable appetite for knowledge over yeah. time and a a strong desire to surround myself with very smart powerful nodes in the global sphere ones that are bringing lots of impact to the world strong value that other people can self-actualize with that we can remove structural violences that impede people from self-actualization and that obviously that ethic of mine has evolved till today. So back when yeah. these things were starting, it wasn't so clearly defined, right? The mission of filling sports stadiums with curious intellectuals wasn't so clearly defined back in 14 months ago. 14 months ago, it was really a list of very powerful questions that I just wrote down and then sent a bunch of powerful people in my network and I got a lot of replies back from those powerful people saying things like this is the best list of interview questions ever you got to go and like really ask these questions and so I was like all right let's start doing that let's start asking these questions to powerful leaders on a show and whatnot and so then we started it and it was very quirky because as you know 14 months ago we literally had like a mixing bowl you a, yeah you were like drawing questions out of a hat <laughs> That was, was very really fun. fun. It was just quirky because, yeah, it's, all, it's yeah. random in that sense. Uh, and anyway, so, the, yeah, we've evolved quite a bit since then, but it stems from this insatiable desire to, to learn as well as then have this video content available for other people around the world to be able to access free of cost, yep. never any paywalls on our content. There's so many paywalls on the Internet 
enough with the paywalls, find other ways to fund the artists and entrepreneurs around the world instead of making paywalls so that the poorest people in the world can't access it. I think that's ridiculous. Um, and I'm a strong supporter of artists and entrepreneurs that, um, that, that ask for five or 10 or 20 bucks for their endeavors. Like right yeah. away, give everyone, give as soon as you can to those people um, because they are trying to go build their own path away from the normal path of the system. Yeah, but I think there's also, like to that point, I think there's a lot of people who, you know, especially like kids, like high schoolers, who maybe can't do that. And I think that's okay too. Like I think just naturally in terms of a big part of your mission is like reaching so many people that like you would expect that most of the people who you're trying to reach, who you're trying to share with, really can't, they, they can't contribute. And that's okay. Yeah. Like that, that's, that's almost right. your model working as intended. That's right. That is the model working as intended, yes. If, yeah. you are, if you are in low SES, never contribute to what we're doing until you've made your way yeah. to, to mid SES, socioeconomic status, because um, sometimes, yeah, sometimes when you only have a couple dollars, it can also be very interesting to give, you know, one of your dollars to, you know, to someone else and just see how that makes you feel and see what it does. But you're right, the system's working exactly how it's supposed to be working when the poorest people in the world are able to watch this content <coughs> free of cost and hopefully learn something from it, get inspired by it, go and build with it, manifest their destiny into the world. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it's interesting, like, if you only have a little giving of what you have, really means a lot to yeah yeah that's right that's right yep yeah yeah a proportion of the total amount of money that you have yeah 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 interesting so another thing I wanted to ask you yes and I I, I think this struck me a little bit after after your event last night but like that was with uh, dr. Adam Gazelli who's, yes. uh, who's a, a world-famous neuroscientist entrepreneur author investor professor and that was a really fun event about yes. neuroscience and about mental health and about solutions to a lot of our technology addictions and um, augmenting human intelligence I love that so yeah shout out to Adam yeah. and shout out to that event and I'm glad you were there Nick's actually yes. been around for a long time helping out with um, even our science comedy show that we started before yeah. that. Nick's been, Nick's, Nick introduced me to FIRST Robotics, which is why he's a roboticist, and he got me involved judging and I'm seeing game announcing and stuff, and I love those kids. Anyway, yes, after the event yes. yesterday. So I, th this kind of struck me. Like, I want to ask, what does a day in the life of Alan Sakyan look like? Well, Nick just watched me, um, Nick just watched me upload the Cognition Crisis video. So, I, so after the Cognition Crisis, this is a, this is a good question. So, um, at the show was at uh, the show was at eight p.m. yesterday on Friday, the December fourteenth, and at around in the morning, sometime around like ten, I think ish, nine or ten. I was beginning to put together the equipment with Ron Vargas. Ron Vargas is the producer and director of the show, and. Uh, he's the Bay Area's preferred technical director, ronvogs.com, of course you've heard of him. And we're putting together the equipment and we're making sure we have everything. So that means, that means robotic cameras, that means control surface for the robotic cameras, that means a TriCaster Mini, that means tripods, that means lights, that means tripods for the lights, that means all of the cabling, that means all of that equipment, we're making sure you don't forget things. So that's like, three pelican cases, three big cable bags, and it's and it's and the four tripods. So this is a lot of equipment that we're talking about. And then and that's fantastic because that's a live switching system which enables you to not have to switch back between cameras during premiere and Ron is able to control the robotic cameras with the control surface instead of have to camera operate manually, he controlled the control surface. Um, that was nine to ten. Then at 10, it was a very hardcore focus on everything that needed to be done in order to get the event rolling in its fullest fruition. This means talking to a lot of the local Bay Area influencers that we know and making sure that they know about the event. Again, like, hey, have you guys, are you guys coming? Do you guys need some, like, some ticket comps to the influencers? Have you guys promoted it yet? Like, we're gonna be rolling really hot tonight. We're really excited for this event, that kind of a thing. And 
so that's so that was really fun because you know it gets the juices starting to flow and then I'm reviewing the material that I've written about Adam and so I've known Adam now for about two years and so uh, and I love you know his book The Distracted Mind and so I was reviewing that book that I read last year and I was meshing together the notes from his cognition crisis piece so synthesizing those things plus Achille his company um, that is working on digital medicine and literally prescribing video games as therapeutics for ADHD, uh, PTSD, Parkinson's, all these yep. interesting things. And, and I, that's probably around noon, then around, um, you know, then around, then at some point I finally end up showering and shaving and getting together the the sort of the um the final touches on on the evening like um making sure that all of the you know we literally have to run to trader joe's we have team anthony carousel is an amazing member of our team as well he does a lot of the event photography and he also does the he'll you know he'll swoop up to our back door here around like 4 30 and the event remember doors open at seven show starts at eight so at 4.30, we're moving all of this equipment into his car. We are lugging it, all of that equipment to Trader Joe's with us because we have to go to Trader Joe's to buy food because the event is, you know, our ticketing is one of the ways that we provide ourselves with revenue. And so I've went through this in our video yep. about the, um, the life of running a YouTube channel and that's also the life of running a business. And so a, one of our main streams of revenue besides Patreon is ticket sales. So our tickets are 35 bucks. That includes food and drink and a ticket to the performance. And that means beer, wine, and an array of food. And so that means we're going to Trader Joe's. And for those that can't afford to come, we give full scholarships. And that's written in the, in the description of the events is we offer full scholarships to low SES people, which is extremely important to us. Again, yeah. very barrier of entry is, is for techies that make 100K, pay 35 bucks, support a local artist. For low SES people that can't afford, email us, free ticket, no problem. Um, so, huge part of our ethic. And then, and then yeah, so then we go and we get all that grub from Trader Joe's and then we go to drop it off at all that grub and the, and the equipment at WorkWise. And, and then we set up all the equipment, we, uh, luckily have volunteers like Nick, we have Steven, we have Jordan, we have a really strong team of people that, that come and help us actually. Um, this is really important as you build something into the world, you gotta get people that, are, that see that you're bringing value and that you ask to help you and to see if they're interested in helping you and keep building value, keep building relationships. And then soon you can get the whole earth behind your back. Look at this beautiful blue and green marble, I love it. The entire so, earth. Well, that's one of the things that I mentioned in the in the TEDx talk that I gave was ideas spread from an individual to the community to the world. And so if you can get the world believing in the fact that we need to have more thought-provoking questions, thought-provoking conversation, discourse, nuance-driven, multidisciplinary discourse about the future of civilization, removing structural violence and all this stuff, which is this is the big ethic of our show, that it will actually happen. And to finish this off, yes. we host the event. The event is fantastic. You know, we're obviously coordinating, having all the guests there, coordinating this with WorkWise, our venue, which we love WorkWise, they're the future of work. And then afterward, so the event, you know, the event executes, it's super fun. We have a, um, we had Paco Romaine, a local barrier Area comic, open up the show for 10 minutes. Then we had Adam and I sit down for an hour and discuss through the notes that I was talking about earlier, very rough, uh, rough. so we can tangent where we want. And then Q&A, about 30, 40 minutes of Q&A, and then we close the show. When you close the show, those three Pelican cases, three bags, four tripods, two lights, etc. we're packing all of that back up, we're moving that back to the studio, um, so that's, you know, that's a tremendous amount of work, and we're networking with people, people are networking with each other, it's hella fun, and that's, um, and you know, hilariously enough, that's not the end of my night. So after waking up at nine and doing that event, I come back and I, you know, Nick and Anthony are down here talking about the universe and talking about all this interesting stuff to me. And I'm thinking like, 
I have to pump out this content. As in, we usually live stream our shows and we only we recorded our show instead of live streaming it and um, it can sometimes be hard to get an ether connection and then you get a two hour show instead of what we have now which we uploaded which is a one hour talk with Adam then a 35 or whatever minute Q&A and then a five minute highlight reel so I was able to chop segments out put them at the beginning to entice people to watch etc so just to finish this up I yeah. I went and worked all night from midnight until 8 a.m. and I uh, I did all that I, I went into Premiere and I made the intros the outros I made the cut pieces out from the middle of our talk and put it at the beginning to entice people to watch it in a very enticing format and then it takes hours it takes hours we woke we you know we woke up maybe around like 11 Eleven thirty, so we three hour, three and a half hours sleep for me, and then immediately when I woke up for the last two hours, I've been making thumbnails to those videos. I've been making tags, making bios, posting all these videos across social media because the ball is still hot. People remember the event; they want to see the content. I have a backlog of twenty interviews to still edit. I need to get this shit out, so it's worth it for us to fucking execute and get shit done. Go and build. Stop being lazy. Stop. You're a, when your attention is fragmented, you are not manifesting your destiny. You, your top-down neural architecture, top-down processing needs to be fueled by you putting everything away and executing for eight straight hours like I did last night. And that's how you get shit done. Focus and get shit done. Turn all your notifications off. Use those devices as one-way communication tools. I can preach for a long time. Nick is ready to ask another <laughs> question. That's the life of a yeah. day when we do an event and I have a fuckload of video to edit. So that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a day. Your focus is really incredible. Thank you, Hamas. Love you. Love you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So the next thing I wanted to ask, like you were getting back into like talking about all these thought-provoking questions. And if I answer for 15 minutes a question, so the show will never end. How about I ask you one? Okay. Yes. You got a thought-provoking one. So Those were good questions. Alan, what do you think of you've outlined and I remember your original 20 questions you had so many questions so many pressing issues yep. things that were top of mind for you then and many of them still are now of those problems or maybe a new one what do you think is the biggest problem that faces our species our civilization our planet and what do you think will end up happening to address that mm, such a good question damn hmm Biggest problem facing our species and what we'll do to solve that. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let's put it this way. Civilization has evolved grace in, in, in many ways just so luckily and gracefully out of four and a half billion years of evolution Earth orbiting the star. And that is a miracle in itself that life evolved to this pinnacle of a human mind that has now built civilizations. The fact that we don't have gratitude in our daily embedded souls for the fact that we are here living amongst each other so beautifully and we're not celebrating and and you know, on a like on a daily basis, carrying around a spirit of like, fuck yeah, it's amazing that we're all alive and sharing this collective experience together. Seven and a half, seven point seven billion of us. That 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 is it, it's disheartening that we don't have that sort of a, a love and communion with each other, communion with nature and evolution that got us here. I think that's the biggest problem that faces our species is that we don't have a collective sense of unity as planet earth as earthlings moving forward and because we could tackle fucking anything we want anything anything we want if we had that collective sense of unity and just we knew how to maximize our full potential and also the resource flows that enable individuals to collectively maximize their potential a lot of it has to do with degrees of freedom one's ability to pursue what they want Shout out to my I mean, dad, Wade. We, we have so much like social fragmentation from all the tribalism that our species yeah. 
has taken on as part of how we've become where we are today. Yeah. How, do we, how do we move past that? Oh, the solution. Yeah, yeah, the solutions. Are good. That's a good, Nick's like, get to the solution. Nick, look at that. <laughs> look at this. Look at this blue marble, blue and green marble. It's freaking gorgeous. The fact that we all freaking live here. Everyone. Everyone lives everyone here. Everyone you've ever so known. Be, everyone you've ever known. All 100 billion humans that have lived and died before us today to build this beautiful civilization and all of the species. I think it's a hundred million species wow. that have been around and now it's 10 million. So 90 million are gone, 10 million species left approximately. And it's just, um, it's just interesting. Well, species naturally extinct. It's not all speciation. Speciation. Yes. yes. So, so the solution, um, yeah, because I have the questions, well, the answers, but I'll, uh, <laughs> let me, uh, let me see what I can, let me see what I can pull here. Um, well, an, an, a one that I think is not difficult to ask of people to do and that is also um, the most accessible thing on the planet is people's breath. Breath. It's people's breath. So if you join me, Nick. Turning off the visual stimuli of the eyes and taking these long inhales and exhales, being grateful for the fact that we're even alive here and breathing, just feeling, feeling our bodies, feeling our hearts. This is the type of stuff that's fucking free. It's free, it's free to do this and to ground yourself into that, that feeling. And then when you ground yourself into that feeling, you gain a greater sense of gratitude for, for you and your body and just, and just feeling in general. And then you can help take that feeling and gain a sense of compassion and empathy for Earth as a unity, as a union with evolution, species, other humans, etc. So I think that's breath. A, breath. Breath is a very interesting. Yeah. Breath is a very interesting solution, um, and it's been passed down for thousands of years. And um, it's just that a lot of people are running around in the economic and political machinery of civilization. <laughs> That's what we're doing nowadays, and in many ways, that doesn't maximize one's ability to connect deeply with their own soul and their own heart and their own self-work and who they are, know thyself, self-awareness, and then the ability to bring value to other people and help civilization. So that's my, that's my answer, Breath, yeah. What, yeah. do you, what, what do you think of that, Hamas? I mean, that actually, that also makes me think back to what like some of the stuff that Adam was talking about last night, mm -hmm. like in this attention economy, like it's so easy to not take that space between stimulus and action yeah. and consider what, how to proceed and to just react. It's as if like this breathing, this mindfulness has been a part of, at least a part of human culture for a long time. And it's only gotten harder as our technology has right. done good and bad things for us. That's right, that's, that's, a, good, that's yeah. a really good connecting point from, from last night. Adam taught us about the pause being one of the yeah. main things that makes humans different than every other species. And that in that moment, that pause, that mindful ability for us to breathe and just be present in that moment and think about our, 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 our hearts, but also our goals and what we care about, rather than going immediately for, oh my God, I'm bored right now, I'm in line, I gotta, I gotta do this, I gotta information forage, uh, you know, it, it, you know, it's, it's um, so anyway, yeah, that's a really, that's a really good connecting point, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. This is very interesting. <laughs> this is very interesting. This is very interesting. Yes, so I'm gonna ask, the next question, and I want to I want to remind everybody 
Like, Alan doesn't know what I'm asking next. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's fantastic. Yeah. I love that part about it. It's fresh that way. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's authentic. It's fresh and real. Yeah. yeah. I per totally am glad that we're doing it this way. Yeah. Yeah. So another question I wanted to ask, and I think we've touched on this a little bit already. Okay. But, like, what, what is your brand? Like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Not only yeah. simulation, but, like, Alan Sakyan. Yeah, yeah. What is your personal yeah, brand? Yeah, that's, good. that's a great question, Nick. Um, it isn't beatboxing. <laughs> my, my, that, that is part of the brand. It's the ability to just be silly and you know, free think and not be so worried about what other people are saying. But there's so much more. The main aspect of the brand, you know, there's a very good quote by just quick on that silliness point, a Dr. Seuss quote um, that um, n that I like nonsense because it wakes up the brain cells. And so, okay. yeah, nonsense is fucking amazing. And so, if you can be like, <laughs> you know, you can just mess around and it just, it livens things up and it just, it makes things not, conformity sucks. So, um, what is the brand of Alan? What's, you know, I don't even really the w the name Alan and you know it's you know it's a beautiful divine thing that everyone is given their name their first name and their last name and that's beautiful and divine in many ways but at the same time it's also like that just just like I don't want my Alan has nothing to do with c civilization civilization has so much more my little 80 year spark of life and death, but those two voids of life and death in my 80 years in between, is a grain of sand on the cosmic scale and the evolutionary scale. And my impact on Earth is so, again, grain of sand. Less so the brand of, of Alan and more so, you know, what can we really do? How can we, how can we augment the perception of civilization to care more about that unity, that collective feeling of prosperity together? Ether moving forward and so that's my that's the brand that's the brand of 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 simulation that's the brand of Alan Sock you know that's the brand but the general idea is just you know whether it's simulation Alan whatever you know don't not even associating it with a brand I know brands are power they're blah blah blah, blah. but just carrying that augmentation and perception if just yeah. more organizations can just carry that augmentation and perception of unity and desire for collective prosperity and how just great how grateful and humble we are to even be here together celebrating like a big party and taking great care of earth and birthing out of the womb into the cosmos i love that stuff nick that's that's um that's your my that's my answer i i think you've just managed to answer my next question as well oh great but i'm gonna see if you have anything to add okay what is your mission okay okay um, I think I think a main part of just something to add to that, which yeah. this is good that you asked about adding to it, is um, there's a lot of structural violences that impede people from self-actualization. And it's extremely important for us to eradicate those structural violences as soon as possible. So giving someone a degree of freedom is extremely important, meaning people don't on earth don't have, some people don't have basic necessities for survival, access to clean water, access to uh, electricity, access to food, access to shelter, access to education and healthcare, these types of things. And so the, 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 the tiniest thing that we, the biggest thing we can do, but it's such an interestingly tiny thing, it's not to go and like <clears throat> deliver fresh water to places that don't have fresh water because that's like a Band-Aid. It's better to actually empower the local communities there to find the sources of fresh water and fresh food, the job growth, as in if they can, if they can actually find a way to prosper in their local communities by 
producing something locally of value and eliminating the structural violences, things like <clears throat> egregious, <clears throat> excuse me, egregious 45% tariffs that occur on importing goods into like places like Senegal, um, other things like the difficulty it is for to to create forms of e-government around the world. Like you have to take a year's worth of your salary, and then you have to wait a year in order to be able to start a business. And then if you mess up on some of your paperwork, people can go and corruptly, greedily try and hold things over your head. These are the things that are impeding people from prospering with their degrees of freedom in whatever ways they desire. And so that's something that is part the part of the evolving ethic that we've developed here and that we want to get out as soon as possible around the world. This is not just the United States. This is around the world. And it's, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get there together, everyone. Just you know, one step at a time, we'll be patient and we'll have a, you know, we'll have a grassroots uprising of this increase of self-awareness and collective awareness slowly, but it will happen. And we're going to obsolete the megalomaniacs those that are too driven by greed and corruption, and we're gonna drive that ethic out of civilization. It's gonna, we're gonna obsolete that system through our grassroots movement. Wow, yeah. that's, that's it. I think that's not only like a message of empowering people, but I think it really speaks to like how you see, how you see the future. Yeah. So. I mean, I think so much, like so much of what you talk about you talk about social problems, you talk about structural problems, but you also talk about like the people, like the, uh, as it were, the great person theory of history. Teach us about that, Nick. Yeah, so I mean, I, I, I think in essence it's the idea, and it's a bit of a simplification, but it's the idea that like a person can be the spark that changes everything. Like butterfly effect style. In a sense, yeah. Yeah. But it's that it's not like structural patterns in society, and it's not inevitable. Yeah. But when you get yeah. a person who's right. the right person for that time, like the Einstein who goes, well, there's all of these ideas, but has that unique spark of insight. Yeah. To really change things. Yeah. But the, of course. The great person theory. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Yeah, the great person yeah. theory. And that means you can be the great person, and you can be the great person. And, and you can be the great person. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I see where you're going. I see where you're going. <laughs> um, no, so I, that's good, Nick. That's yeah. good. Yeah. I like that a lot. But I'm curious, right. like, so you, you talk about so much nuance and so many ups and downs and challenges and potential solutions and ideas and problems. Where do you see, like when you think of the future, do you think of it optimistically? Or do you think of it like pessimistically or concerned for the way that the future will unwind? Like how do you, how do you see the future? So, <clears throat> This is good, this is good. <clears throat> so, first and foremost is becoming very informed about the current state of humanity and then also the history of how humans got to this place. So, there's a very important principle called the Pareto Principle. You have to focus so much of your time and your neural architecture because there's a limitation in the amount of time and neural architecture you can fill and go and parse for the highest signal. This means go and find the only 20% of information that exists about the current state of humanity and the history of humanity that's going to give you the 80% or more grand picture, the picture of big history of understanding how civilization got here and who we are, first and foremost. So do that, build out your mental lattice really strongly with the highest signal possible and focus. So that's first. Look at this freaking gorgeous earth that we live in. I love this place. It's amazing. It's gorgeous. Um, seven, 7.7 billion of us. Okay, so that's first and then that's realism. So that's realism is having this true, real picture of big history, first and foremost. 
And then we carry a sense of optimism. We carry a sense of optimism about what we talked about earlier in the show, our ability to prosper collectively and become a pinnacle civilization in the cosmos and just ramp up, maximize human potential to the fullest as at an individual collective level. And so that's a great sense of optimism there. So it's like an optimistic realist, but, but it's extremely important to still have a very strong realistic understanding of the negative influences that still plague the world in terms of those structural violences. Who is creating those structural violences? Why are they purposely, what, what led societal evolution and their individual mind evolution in their environment to want to be greedy, to want to be corrupt, mm -hmm. to want to be violent? What led them to those points? Ask yourself these questions. What led them there? And then how do we remove the obstacles, those issues that leads people to those, to those feelings? So, so that's, you have the realistic perspective, optimistic perspective, and you also understand the negatives to obsolete the negatives by building out the optimistic positives. That would be my answer okay. to that. Yeah. Okay. Good questions. I like that. So what do you think, like, as humanity goes on, I know, like, unity is a big theme that you've had as you're talking through this. Yes. But, like, as humanity goes, um, and I, I know you're familiar with the idea of, like, a type 1 civilization, type 2. Yeah, Kardashev as, scale. Kardashev scale, yeah. yes. As Shout out to our homie Kardashev. <laughs> <laughs> What's Kardashev's first name? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's, um, let's give let's a, look let's, it up. Let's, okay. give a, let's give a proper shout out to Kardashev here. Yes. Kardashev scale. It is, the Kardashev scale is, Kardashev first name, what's that first <laughs> name? Um, By Nikolai Kardashev. Oh, Nikolai Kardashev, yeah, Soviet yes. astronomer. Yeah, Yeah. cool. So Kardashev scale is a method of measuring a civilization's level of technological advancement based on the amount of energy a civilization yep. is able to use. Proposed by Soviet astronomer Nikolai Kardashev in 1964. So yeah. just a quick overview, just for people that don't know, because we haven't even talked about this. Um, a type one civilization is one that can harness all of the power of their planet. A type two civilization can harness all of the power of their star. And a type three civilization can harness the power of all of the stars of their galaxy. Yes. Okay. So that's uh, that's yes. our that's our Kardashev scale, everyone. So yes. it's a metric of growth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and as growth. humanity, as our civilization grows, what is something that you think is important that we hold on to and don't lose sight of? Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very good question. Very good question. We talked about breath, and breath yep. was extremely important. Yep. Um, breath kind of is that thing that makes us hu really human. <coughs> <clears throat> um, that pause, that breath really makes us human. The ability to be mindful. Um, I'd like to see us yeah, retain that, that, that sense of, of true ethereal humanity, something that's so subtly beautiful. The word in Japanese for it is yugen. It's a profound sense of like mystery and beauty of the universe. And Because we are progressing into the age of, of exponential technologies, and so now it's really important to retain some sort of really in just true mindful principles of humans and ethics and morals and compassion and care for each other um, now more than ever. Um, yeah, I, yeah, uh, yeah. To oh. really hold on to our humanity. Yeah. Really. Yeah, what would you answer that question Ooh. with? I mean, I. I think the thing that really sticks out to me is like, but it, it, it's kind of two sides of the same coin. It's the sense of wonder and the inquisitiveness. Mm, those are good. That yeah. we have. Those like, really good. that as we go into a future where the cosmic background, microwave background, is no longer necessarily detectable, mm. and there are new things, and there's only so much time that we have to learn all that we can learn. Mm. Mm. Like, I, I think, like, finding out about ourselves, about the universe, and wanting to know more, that thirst for knowledge, 
I, I know we talk about it like on the psychological side as like being information foraging, mm -hmm. but I think I think there's a very strong and powerful side to that as well. And I think I don't I don't want to see us lose that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have another question because that was really good. Sure. This, the sense of wonder and the sense of excitement to go forth out and build and create and work together as a union as we go out, learn as much as possible. <clears throat> I would be curious to hear your thoughts about this. Yeah. Prior to what, is it that, is it that they call it heat death? Of, heat death, yes. Of the universe? Yes. All of the stars go out at some point? Yep. Okay. And that's supposedly supposed to be a couple decade, d tens of billions of years. Yeah. yeah. Decades of billions yes. of years. Yeah. Tens of billions down the line. So my thought about that then would be, you know, okay, let's talk tens of billions of years. It's ridiculous that yeah. humans are able to contemplate this kind of stuff. My point is, is that it wouldn't it be interesting for us to discover that everything is kind of recursive in the sense that ah, yes. civilization advances to the point of singularity, our ability to to have such a strong union with evolution and technology and all the power in the universe, all that is in the universe, and make ourselves invincible of the heat death invincible of the- Invincible to the heat death, Invincible yes. to the heat death of the universe. And then once you get to that point, then it goes right back into the birth of potentially a big yeah. bang and again you have new worlds forming yes. new life's forming maybe you're maybe you don't actually maybe on the spark of life and death after you die maybe you go right into the next game the next mission that you're playing to level up your soul it's exciting stuff on a different rock with a different civilization that has evolved what yeah. do you think about that nick i mean i it, it reminds me a lot of the idea of like a big crunch that's the first thing that comes Above to mind. A big, big crunch. Oh. Big, Are you familiar? I think I've, I've, I've tell, so tell us again. So you have the idea <clears throat> of the universe dying by heat. Mm -hmm. You have the idea of the universe dying through cold. Mm -hmm. What if? <coughs> what if, <coughs> rather than either of those outcomes, the universe is actually cyclic? Mm -hmm. Yes, the cyclic. Where yeah. the expansion that dark energy and dark matter are sort of attached to reverses mm. and everything comes back to a point mm -hmm. before a new big bang boom there yes. it is that's that's it i love it yes i I, love I i'll admit i'm not up on the latest research on possibilities for yeah. the trajectory of our universe likewise totally yeah. but i do love that idea me too like that seems it, it's certainly a possibility in the future it's a possibility yeah but i think it's it's a really poetic one it's a very, very poetic and gorgeous one. And I love thinking about that one. And also I'd like to, you know, for us yeah. to clarify, like you just clarified, we don't, we're not like professionals in this yeah. field, but we also don't have bias of like attachment towards that ideology, but it's just a poetic ideology yeah. that is cool to think about. And um, maybe if the universe is so damn beautiful, like we're pointing out to, maybe that is the truth. Maybe that is the beauty is that poetic, Cyclical, Maybe. yeah, it's gorgeous. I mean, it's gorgeous. for as much as the universe does not care what our aesthetic preferences are, they're they're a remarkably good guide for things that we should look into as possibilities. Because I mean, if you think about, and this is something we were ta talking about earlier, like how math yeah. drives That's right. and is attached to so much of not only how the universe exists and how physics works and all of these things, but a lot of like our aesthetic, 
preferences, like the golden ratio. The golden ratio, yeah. Are tied yeah. into mathematics as well, and we're able to describe them in that language. Yeah. So while it's not like, oh yeah, this is something that aesthetically makes sense to us, therefore it's probably true. Things that seem poetic in that way, like that, that's an inspiring thing to go, I want to find out about that. I want to see if that's true. Yeah. I want to research that. And like, it's not only personally meaningful to the people who are doing that, but it's actually not a bad heuristic. Yeah. Yeah. I, like I, I love that. that one. Yeah. I like that. It's a very powerful heuristic. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really happy that you lined that out. Yeah. Yeah. R just so being there with that feeling of what you just described is so important. I love it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Like creating meaning through things that are yeah. powerful to you. Yes. Period. And then yes. if it also gives us a collective understanding of reality, yeah. even all the better. better. All the better. Yeah. All the yeah. better. Yeah. So speaking of things that are like personally meaningful. Okay. I know one of your big goals, you want to fill a stadium yes. with people like who are celebrating ideas. Yes. And I, and I love- And executing them, yeah. Executing them, yes. Executing them too, yeah, both. And I love the idea and the symbolism of that. And I, frankly, like, <laughs> I, I feel like anybody betting against that is gonna lose. Oh, really? Yeah, okay, but, I hope, I hope. <laughs> but I, I wanna Someone know, else can also pull it together, yeah. Yeah, totally. yeah. I hope, I hope someone Maybe else it's not, yeah. I, I hope it's not just you. Exactly, I hope it's I hope many people. Yeah. If anything, maybe you're the first, but not the last. Total, yeah, absolutely. But absolutely. I want to know, like, you get there. What's your next big goal? After that? Yes. Oh, my God. Where, where do you go from there? Okay, interesting. Um, well, s for sure, s stadiums, filling them around the world. So not just, one, okay. not just one stadium, but stadiums around the world. <clears throat> By the time we get to that point, I think we're likely going to have closer to 9 billion people on the planet. So it will be really important to go to these different diverse areas. I mean, Africa in many ways is blossoming to become an amazing place of potential, creative potential. The demographics are so young and they're gaining access to the most important basic necessities that are going to enable them to flourish. I'm super excited for Africa. And so... Like things like that just get me jazzed because that is like, well, we could go and do a in Addis Ababa. We could go do one in Ethiopia, fill a stadium there. We could go fill a stadium in Dakar and Senegal, um, fill a stadium in Cairo, fill a stadium in Lagos, and like that excites me so much to go do that in Africa. Fill stadiums in South America, in Asia, Europe. Fuck it. Let's go to um, Camp Murdo uh, in <laughs> McMurdo. McMurdo. Camp McMurdo. McMurdo yes. base. The McMurdo base in, <laughs> in Antarctica. Let's uh, let's go down there. All seven continents. All seven I continents. Like that. Shout out to our homies in uh, in, Tan in Antarctica. Look at that gorgeous piece of ice down there. Holy fuck. Yeah. It's amazing. It's a commonly distorted body by different projections. Yeah, the projections. Suck, but look at <laughs> look at that. That's that's a beautiful, real way to understand how massive that piece of ice is. Yeah. Because it's on a sphere now instead of on a two D Mercator map. Yeah. Or yeah. any number of projections that skew it from being yeah. tiny, yeah. like that little thing on the bottom, to being massive and oversized compared to what it is. Yes. 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 So, um, so stadiums around. <clears throat> yeah, stadiums around the world after the first one and making a culture of stadiums, making a culture of curious intellectuals gathering to talk about ideas in nuanced, multidisciplinary formats where they're actually, and we'll eventually get to this point too, we don't have the 
financing and the structure to be able to do this yet, but we will in our studio as well as our live events. In studio, we sometimes put it up on the, on the screen here as we talk about things. But I really want to actually be able to start writing out the mental lattice that's being developed in a sit down. So once we sit down with someone like right now with Nick, we would have had already had, you know, in this area we've been talking about the union of earth. In this area we've been talking about eradicating yep. the structural violences. That way there's a visual being developed simultaneously with the conversation. Ooh. I know. And I've talked to a lot of I've messaged the intellectual dark web about this, and I really want to to get this into the large, you know, three thousand seat theaters as soon as possible, where we're actually putting on the projector screen the mental lattice that's being developed out as conversation is going, and a visual rep representation of it. So anyway, in the sports stadiums, what okay. I'd like I'd like to see in the sports stadiums is the curious intellectuals coming up, building out this mental lattice, and then having their innovative thoughts that they're having actually have action items of execution. This group of 1,000 curious intellectuals that really love this idea of scaling clean meat, making it in bioreactors around the world in the largest amounts around the world, they're gonna tackle that and they're gonna get clean meat everywhere as fast as possible in all of its varieties. You know, then so I'm talking about like that. So this this is I guess where it goes next is these pockets of thousands or hundreds or even just a dozen people that go off and execute on the on the ideas that the curious intellectuals wow. have in the, in the stadiums. Love okay. You. Love you. Yeah. So you both want to spread it like out, but also like strengthen it and turn it from like something that's not only a like meaningful event, I think, for a lot of people, but like turn it into something that is actionable. Yeah. That's right. That's, that's right. Of course. Of yeah, course. It has I, to have that, yeah. I, I think that really, I think that, I think that dovetails nicely. Like, yeah, I think a big you. part of how you, if not how you see the world, like how you interact with the world, is like very entrepreneurial. Totally. <laughs> like obviously, right? <laughs> right? Uh, but that's uh, one hundred. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Totally. That's that's totally. how you come at the world. It's one but of the like, most important ways to come at the world. I think there's a lot of Innovate. lenses yeah. that you take in addition to that. Like you talk to psychologists, biologists, computer scientists, physicists, chemists. Yes, sir. Like yes, sir. scientists of just about every description that I can list off. Yes, sir. And the entrepreneurs and yeah. the artists and yep. the educators and the technologists and the geopolitical scientists and the emotional intelligence researchers and all the different types of people yeah. from different places of, of origin across the earth too. So you're building out the multidisciplinary yeah. mental lattice. And like Nick, you also yeah. described quick, I know you wanna go again. You described something really interesting, yeah. which was you described how the stadium idea goes from, it goes from zero to one, yep. as Teal says. It goes from zero to one, the creative thought of figuring out how to put together the sports stadium in the first place. Then it interestingly goes from one to many, so it goes yep. across. So it goes across the world, and then, funny enough, it cycles right back to from one to two. So you're going again from zero to one mm -hmm. across all of these stadiums. Are then going and yeah. flourishing up ideas and executing, and then those ideas are spreading again. This is the tree that we've had. The wheel made yep. so much more. The language made so much more, etc. So that's what we'll be doing, so I just wanted to share that. Yeah, yes. your design pattern is both out and up. Up, out and up. I yes. love it, I love it, team. I yeah, love it. but I, I wanted to it. ask, like, I, I know interdisciplinary is yeah. a huge concept for you. Yes, interdisciplinary is a good way to put it, so is multidisciplinary. Multi. I like yes. both of those words a lot. I mean, I think they're, like, close partners. They're super close partners, yeah. But I wonder, like, if not the maybe, entrepreneurial Maybe lens. we should quickly explain, because I think Okay. In, I think inter is more about if you smash together like biotech and neuroscience yep. or like biotech and blockchain or something like that. You smash those. That's interdisciplinary. Interdisciplinary is the, like the lattice, as you might yeah. say, like that place where the two disciplines come together. And I think inter is specifically would be biotech and blockchain, like that yes. Venn diagram, yes. that overlap. And then multidisciplinary could mean two or three or four or five or six 
disciplines in yes. that in, in that um, Venn diagram center where that's a big um, part of yeah. again I think augmenting people's perception and civilization's perception to have as much nuance and perspective as possible um, you I, I've actually yeah. considered this what do you think about Alan nuance Sakyan what do you guys think <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, um, what do you guys think? I, I, I feel like there's more to you than nuance. I think if more of civilization could get behind the word nuance and actually practice it in a meaningful way, yeah, I think we could prosper faster. But yeah, yeah. Al, how about Alan multidisciplinary suck? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> fucking around. Okay, I'm so, continue, please. Yes, please, yes. Yeah. Okay. So what I really wanted to ask is like, if you hadn't gone the route of seeing things as an entrepreneur. Yeah. If you had gone, if your life had gone a different way, I'm sure you would have ended up in a similar place. But maybe, maybe, yeah. Is there something else that speaks to you as like the way that, another way you could have gone or another lens that like you really want to dive into more in the future? Mm -hmm. Like some other discipline, some other way of seeing the world okay, that I you I want have, to pull in. I think I have the answer here. Okay. I'm glad that it came so quickly. It means maybe it's, um, Maybe it's actually extremely true yeah. to me. Um, so two things there. <clears throat> the, the first thing is that I, when you say that if you did not do simulation and what you're doing right now, you know, maybe you'd be in a similar place in some sort of other area and whatnot. My thought about that is sure, maybe but i think it was extremely easy for any of these variables to be tweaked just such to where i would have stayed where i was born in sioux falls south dakota my entire life yeah and that was quite easy or stayed and finished college at the university of minnesota in minneapolis and then stayed in minneapolis or went to chicago or went back to sioux falls or whatever that any of those small tweaks in the variables would have ended me up in a place that I think would not have been maximizing my truest potential into the world. And so here I am in a place where I feel like I am truly maximizing my truest potential, and it's because I refused to conform to the principles of normalization that are permeating civilization in every single way that you know stay near stay near where you were born near your family and your friends and the people that you know go to the college that you want to go to go for four years even if you don't know what you want to do and you know, follow these normal get a job that's nine to five and you know make enough money so you can buy a house have kids and family I say it with drudgery, not because it is a drudgerous thing. To some people, this is most meaningful to them. Fantastic. You are your own color on the color wheel, as am I. And not one color is better than the other, but what's interesting is not enough people know that this color even exists. The entrepreneurial color, the offbeat path, a lot of kids aren't even introduced to the fact that they don't have to go to college. They can go and execute their ideas starting at the age of 10 into the world. They can start executing at super young ages. No, shout out to Jojo Siwa, this 16 year old down in Los Angeles that's been executing since she was like freaking six or eight, learning how to act and dance and sing and do. Wow. Um, and be a business person and now she's rocking down in Los Angeles and has millions of people that are following her and subscribe to her and you know um, and, and, and she's a very inspirational young person that's like you know does the whole dream thing if you can see it you can be it you know believe in yourself and achieve things as a Gen Z this is really important she's 16 teaching like two to 14 year olds this stuff at the Gen Z's so my point is is that can you imagine if more people knew about what, there's a couple points here. If a, more people knew about the ability to pursue what was on the offbeat path, 
that they saw the 99% walking down the path or 95% or 90 or 80% bifurcated across, trifurcated across a bunch of different paths. Then they saw a different path that they didn't know that they could see until a mentor told them about it or until they watched someone else like Gary Vaynerchuk talk about the fact that just sh shatter through the normal uh, conformist principles and go find your own shit to do and execute, execute, execute daily, that that, that lead has led me to a great point of self-actualization. Also, there are, I believe, potentially, potentially, a lot of different multiverses going on, a lot of different universes occurring that have these Allens in them. The Allen that stayed in Sioux Falls is actually exists in a different universe right now. Um, the Allen that stayed in Minneapolis finished college is still in Sioux. The Allen that left the Bay Area because he was pissed off about how hard it was to be an entrepreneur. Um, I talked about this a little bit in the show. I was 22, 23, 24, et cetera. It was just so stressful being an entrepreneur in the Bay Area and I wasn't patient. I wasn't patient. I was like, I wanna get there so fast. I wanna get there so fast. But the journey's the most important part. The journey's the most important part. I think and that's so, something that's true in a lot of people's lives, even if they're not going the entrepreneurial route, going for that shade, that wonderful Allen color. Yeah. I think like people go, I see, I see this thing up here. Like this is my goal. I want to be a scientist. I want to be like a big author. I want to be whatever like their thousand foot view of where they want to be is. And they see where they are right now. And they go, this is daunting. This is scary. This is, this is terrifying. And like they, That's right. it's really challenging for a lot of people to go, okay, so here's this. Here's the next step. Yeah. Here's the next three steps after that. And like, to honestly, to see people who have done that. So important. And to like meet people and understand that there is a path from A to Z and you can't do it in one leap. Like that's not a thing. Oh yeah, it's called, um, here it is. I just want to yeah. show it to people. It's called the valley of death of entrepreneurship. It's like, it's like kind of like this, basically, in a very small way to, oh. you know, to explain it. Just like you have this amazing, um, wild imagination of a creative endeavor you want to execute into the world. And then it's the journey, which is the hardest part, yeah. which is the valley of death, because so many ideas die in that section, which is what I was just referencing. Um, the idea that you're, you're, tr you're, you're trying to go and, and, <clears throat> and execute like I was in the Bay Area, and then in the, a different multiverse, in a different universe, there is an Allen that is currently roaming Europe or China or whatever other part of the world because Allen just pulled the plug out of the rat race in Silicon Valley and went somewhere else. Is that Allen differently, meaningfully actualized? Sure, he would be in Sioux Falls too, et cetera. So that was one part of the answer. Yeah. I'm glad you brought this up, the Valley of Death. <clears throat> the Valley of Death is so freaking important, Nick. I'm really happy you brought it up. And another part of the answer um, to your question is, if Alan was yep. not doing simulation, Alan would be and I do believe this is something that I will be doing in the future with what I've built with this project, yeah. hopefully, is that I really want to actually architect I want to be a planetary architect. So look at Nick's face. Everyone. <laughs> yeah. So I want to be a planetary architect. That means that I want to, I want to architect the frameworks of civilization that enable maximal prosperity, both as individuals and also as a collective. So that's what I would, be doing slash want to be doing in the future along with this. So it's like the stadiums plus those creative warehouses, which we didn't really get to touch on, but yeah. the idea of where these stadiums are going to have these, you know, these groups of people that go, they get access to these massive centers that enable them to, with all the technologies. And again, this is not based on ownership. This is based on decentralization, decentralization, decentralized artificial intelligences that are able to move about and, and help with these things. But the creative execution of these ideas that come from these stadiums are the ideas that do the thing that I just described about maximizing civilizational prosperity and being a planetary architect. So the people, everyone yeah. is in that sense doing it, but some people are doing it on a very 
individual scale where they go and spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with yep. another human and then they go tell me about your life how can I help you how can I bring value to you etc and a lot of people also do this on a scale of like how can I impact 7.7 .7 billion people in the next two years with a really crazy cool idea and so there's all these different scales of civilizational planetary architecture so anyway yeah. that would be my answer this is I think yeah we've been going for a while we have um, how many more cues my last question oh this is the last one. Oh this my is the one I promised you oh my god this is the one I promised you you really should expect oh gosh okay but I still don't know what it is so okay right, let's do this do you oh. Alan Sakyan, oh god I know I know what it is now <laughs> that we are in a computer <laughs> I, I simulation <laughs> um oh, I'm glad I'm being asked this question now <laughs> interesting Thanks for thanks, Nick, for asking this. Um, hmm. We started interestingly um, hinting at this last night in conversation, mm -hmm. and I thought it was really good that we started hinting at it this way. Um, I like thinking of the universe in code. And if we think about the universe in code, things kind of start making sense about how reality exists. And let's take an example that your heart beats 86,000-ish times per day. You can quite easily run that as a line of code. You beat 86,000 times per day unless or you know if you can have exercise occurs beat more times per day if decreased heart rate occurs from deep periods of meditation then less times per day etc. I can almost guarantee you that you are going to have a line of code that says that you're gonna urinate three times today, you're gonna to eat three times today, you're gonna to brush your teeth twice today, you're gonna to take one shower today, you're gonna to blink 10, 20, 30,000 ish times today. You're going to do these things a certain amount of times per day. It's kind of interesting. So, Are there, are, is, is there a certain, let's talk about this also on a solar system-esque scale. Is the Earth 93 million miles from the star? Yes, ish, that's what we call this. We call these miles, million miles. Is gravity 9.8 meters per second squared? Yeah, okay, we've called these things with these labels, okay. We see how these things are kind of codified, they're coded. And if you can code the distance of the planet from the star and the brightness of the star and the size of the star and the mass of the planet and the the actual atoms. So again, we're just, now we're breaking down the periodic table, we're breaking down, uh, how we're carbon-based beings, how there's oxygen that we breathe, et cetera. There's so much of this. It's, it's difficult to, to try and summarize in the most concise way possible. And I think the easiest way for me to summarize it is how I just started trying to put it into pieces, which is just thinking about the universe as code makes the inquiry of simulation theory more interesting to try and understand. Because when we get to that point that we were talking about earlier, in yeah. the show when we were talking about singularity that there are going to be interesting simulations that we run ourselves and we will learn a lot about ourselves when we run those simulations. If you can code what it's like for a rock earth to orbit 
a star, a burning nuclear fusion reactor, if you can code that and code 13.8 billion years of evolution and code the 4.5 billion years of evolution of Earth and code the last 6 million years of evolution of the human, that if you encode these things and all of a sudden you see the exact point in 2018, this year, that we're at, and you're like, wow, civilization is the exact way that our code ran that it would predict it to be, that's when you say, that's when you say wow, how is this itself potentially not just code? So that would be um, a, a nuance-driven way to say, think about the universe as code and let that thought experiment run you into cool ways of thinking and enjoy the conversation with other people about it. Yeah. And last bit on it is how interesting is it though that maybe you are leveling up. Maybe this is you in your 80 year span here on earth leveling up and we are, your mission may be to come to Earth to help civilization make sense of itself in the cosmos and help this civilization prosper collectively as a union. That may be your mission because I have a strong feeling that it's my mission. And so this is me leveling up and you're leveling up too. And who knows what will happen afterward that is my, that is my <laughs> answer, Hamas. Do you, what do you, what do you, what did you think of that? You tell me what you thought of that. No, I think that's. It, it's a uniquely Allen. <laughs> I think it's a uniquely Allen way to, way to answer it, because I think, I, I've definitely seen like similar approaches to the question, of, can we simulate a universe. And. Certainly, the famous example of, if we can, we probably are one. But the idea of looking at it from, from the top down, from the emergent properties, looking down onto the universe. It's interesting. I think, that, I, I think that's a unique twist. That it's, it's an Allen way of framing it. That, that question. It really is. May, yeah, Alan. It's very you. We stand on the shoulders of giants, so I've, you know, yeah, I hope to bring some sort of unique perspective to the way yeah. that, we, that we think about these things. And I'm glad, I think. I'm glad you, I'm glad you uh, resonate with, with it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what you've done for the last, what is it, 245? Yeah, 245. Interviews before this. Yeah, we're on 246. 246. Baby. 246. Yeah, and we still have a backlog of 20 more. Yeah. And that's great. That's a lot in, uh, in a year. It's been a lot of fun. We'll be at, you know, if we're at 500 next year, that means we've kept pace, yeah. um, which is exciting. Um, and, and I think... Think about how many brilliant people there are to feature on this program. I'm super excited to feature more of you brilliant people on this program and hopefully inspire more people to care about that union together moving forward. I love you, Nick. And no doubt you'll have trouble. You'll have zero trouble finding 500 more after that. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. The guests. The guests. Uh. No problem. It's uh. <laughs> how long do the you know how long do the batteries run? Um, but y there's um there's it's it, interesting that, like the like the energy inside not yeah the 80 year energy not like the batteries of a device. The the just quickly an interesting thought is um, post-production in many ways is a very, I think, potentially in some ways, <clears throat> in, especially in long form conversation, I think post-production is slightly dying because as you see what's going on here, we have this long form nuance driven conversation and we're switching live between cameras, ba, 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 and it's, interesting because this goes live to YouTube and Facebook and then it lives there digitally and we have a recording of it and whatnot but that is done there we don't have to go behind 
a computer into Premiere and go and cut for hours and hours and hours and nitpick and all this kind of stuff. And so I'm just saying that this medium in itself is a very fascinating medium, this long form, multi-camera, live stream format, because you know how much easier it's going to be for us to do hundreds of interviews when it's yeah. live like this. You can sit down for one hour with 12 different people in a day. You can do 12 interviews in a day if you're that yeah. absolutely fanatic, which I am. Um, we'll eventually get something crazy like that. But um, point being is that post-production will still live for other, for other things. Yeah. Um, definitely, especially like um, um, uh, movies and stuff, it, post-production is a big thing. And yeah, well. no, I think, yeah. I think to your point, like, we were talking earlier about how you spent, it, I think it was more than eight hours. Yeah, it was like eight editing hours. Editing all of the video from, from last night. Last night. Yeah, it was eight hours. Like, I, I think it's nuts. not doing post-production and this live format itself allows you to drop all of that, let that fade away, and really focus on the content. And really focus on your mission. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. And yeah. I, I, and I, it's, it's in, in People that sit behind computers know how yep. crazily uh, straining it can be for your neck, your back, your hips, your fingers, your eyes to be behind computer screens. And when you're here, you're more, you know, we're more flowy, we're more like, you know, we can do whatever, you we know. Move around. Move around and we're doing, we're doing eye to eye, face to face. Yeah. This is not behind a computer screen. So this it's more is more personal. It's more personal, and it's you know there's an inter, there's interlocutors, so there's it's a dialogue that's going on, and there's empathy and compassion and mental lattices at play versus a computer screen. So this is totally the future. Yeah, Nick, that was great. That Thank was. Thank you. Um, I think you unleashed a lot of really powerful things in me by urging us to do this. And I love you so much for wanting to do this and caring about me enough to do this. And you are yourself a very powerful interlocutor, a powerful polymath, a powerful human that cares so much about building a bright future. And I am just blessed to have you as my friend and also, and also just that you did this because this, it, took, it took a lot of powerful things that have been building up in me over the last year especially over the yeah. last couple of months. And we were able to really synthesize them quite interestingly in fascinating ways and get them out. Um, yeah. And that's what I normally yeah. do for other exactly. people when they're I, here. Yeah. I feel like you do all of this and you are, you're the guy in the editing suite. You're so many of these things and it's not, it's never about you. But I think you have a lot that you can share. And I, Thanks, I, I, I knew that I wanted to do this for a while. I think it was six months ago. Yeah, when I first came up with the idea. It might. It might be. It, it might, might be. be a, longer it than might that. be longer than that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But it was a while ago, and yeah. I, I, I'm not quite sure what it was, but I knew, I knew today was when you needed to do this. I'm happy that you. And I want to help that, Alan yeah. level up. Yeah. <laughs> you have successfully, successfully <laughs> helped me level up. Yeah, we did a lot of cool things, like. Um, the one to many and then the upping of all those ideas going out. We talked about so many cool things. I greatly appreciate yeah. you for it. Um, any last thoughts from you? I mean, I, I think that was it. I was gonna was ask it? the same of you. Okay. Do you have any last thoughts? Um, I normally just, you know, close out the show by telling people how much I fucking love them and we can we can do that and inspiring people to actually build. So um, yeah, let's let's do that. I want to, you know, huge shout out to Nick, everyone. Major shout out to Nick. Um, you can follow Nick on. You guys can follow Nick on Twitter. Nick, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Bring it in, I bring it in, brother. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you guys can you guys can follow Nick. Nick's Twitter is below, and also um, a thing that Nick's really passionate about is First Robotics. I really recommend people to get involved with First Robotics around the world, and I'm very passionate about it too. Um, I was really thinking about trying to get it to places in the world that don't have it yet. Yeah, it's very exciting stuff. A um, lot of a uh, lot of cool stuff can happen when um, young uh, girls and boys get to design and engineer robots because then they get to learn about what they potentially can care about, et cetera. So anyway, check out um, First Robotics, firstinspires.org is, is the link, their URL. 
Um, and so a huge shout out to Nick. Love you, Nick. And for you guys tuning into this episode, I really appreciate you guys tuning into this episode. It's been a very special one for me, and it's a huge thanks to Nick for making it happen. Um, let me know your thoughts, because I know some of you are frequent frequenters on our channel, and you have heard content from us before, and that we'd love to hear from you about what your thoughts were about me unleashing myself in this way, and about you know Nick here. I have for a long time wanted uh, Nick to be, you know, as we develop this out from, an, in, from a dialogue between two people, eventually we'll build this out to be able to host three or four people simultaneously in multidisciplinary format, and Nick is one of the people that I definitely want to have with us in those, um, in those uh, multi-person sit-downs. Um, for the newbies as well, for people that haven't seen the show before that are watching this, and a lot of you have commented before about who is this guy, you know? And so, like, you know, Nick's laughing right now because <laughs> it's, it's very true that, like, some of, you, some of you are like, who the fuck's this guy? So this is a good way for, for those that are new to get to know, I guess, a bit more about simulation, a bit more about who I am, a bit more about what we care about and what we want to do in the world. So um, give us your thoughts, too. Give us your thoughts in the comments below, everyone. We'd love to hear from you. There is a... a there is a Telegram link. There's a ways to, to subscribe to us and follow what we're doing. But there's also a Telegram link for a chat that we have, a community chat that we, where we talk about really interesting questions um, and answers to them. And it's a really nuanced, driven, fun group that where we do this discussion. So join that if you'd like. Um, if the spirit so moves you and you are financially capable, it'd be awesome to um, have you join us as a Patreon, a patron or do cryptocurrency. Those links are below as well. Um, we need to do get some new lavalier mics that have higher quality. We need to get some new LED lights instead of our old 500 watt lights that are ridiculously not environmentally conscious. Um, so we need your help in scaling our impact and interviewing people from around the world that have invited us to go out there and do that. Um, and most importantly, out of all of this information on the closing segment, is go and build the future. We just talked about top-down processing last night, about goal setting and conscientiousness and distraction-free life, as distraction-free as possible with your focus. Build. Maximize your own creative potential into the world. Bring value to civilization. I love you all. I love you all. Thank you so much for joining us. And we'll see you soon, everyone. Peace.